Good afternoon to everybody. Good evening from our, our students in Germany. My name is Carlos Humberto Ita. I'm the director of the business school at Tech Millennium University, and it is a pleasure for me to give you the, this welcome to the master class about business, about social media analytics. Today, we have the privilege to have Professor Bernd Hessen from the Ansbach University and Julia Hessen, marketing manager at Predictable Revenue. They will talk about this topic that is really relevant in the actual world and in the digital transformation. And, and we, we all know that the use of the data is really important for all the people that are studying business as a bachelor degree. Uh, I, Bear and Julia, welcome to Tech Millennium University. Thank you for Thank sharing you. this important and exciting topic with us. The stage and the screen is yours. Welcome. Yeah, thank you very much, Carlos, um, and also Perla for um, allowing us to be giving this session today. And I welcome all the students that are listening in, whether they are from Mexico or from Germany, um, um, irrespective. So I'm glad to be here. And I don't want to waste any time because uh, we have only 60 minutes left and I have so much to share with you. So um, let me go to the first screen just briefly about myself. Um, I have a master in business computing and uh, a doctor of management. And I have worked in the business consulting field for about 11 years in uh, Europe as well in, as in the United States. And since the last 17 years, I've been professor in Germany at the Ansbach University. And Ansbach is a partner university of Tech Millennial. That is uh, how this contact got established and I'm very glad that it did. Um, and for you to know uh, the size of our university, we have about 3,500 students in residency in Ansbach and about 80 professors and 200 support staff. And you see the location of Ansbach, it's in southern Germany, where we have a beautiful atmosphere. And certainly uh, you're welcome to study in Ansbach uh, anytime you want. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Just briefly about myself as well. Um, my name is Julia. I studied global management, the bachelor in Germany. Part of that um, was an exchange year, and I studied negocios internacionales at the Nahuac in Cancun. That's what led me to Mexico, so I've been living in Mexico for the past three years. Currently in Merida, so I'm still studying my Yucca accent, for those of you that are familiar with Yucatan. <laughs> Um, and yeah, as mentioned before, I'm currently marketing manager, so overseeing all digital and social media marketing efforts. Um, and just real quick, Predictable Revenue, the company I work for, um, is based in Canada, although we have people all around the world. We have people in the US, in Germany, in the UK, and we have over 40 employees in Mexico. Um, yeah, so 100% remote company. And now I would like to share with you the agenda um, first of all, I want to make sure that you understand what is social media analytics, then how does it work, obviously, and where can it add value? A couple of examples of companies that have leveraged social media analytics. And then finally, really understanding the value. Let me start with the definition. Certainly, there's uh, a foundation. You have to gather data from social media channels and it's meant to be used to support your business decisions and to measure the performance of the actions that are taken by the businesses. And included in social media analytics are three other disciplines that is social media listening, social media monitoring and social competitive analytics. And social media listening includes learning from what individuals have to contribute on social media, their opinions, their likes, their dislikes, and you knowing what uh, your potential customers think about your company, rather than guess, uh, guessing around. And then social media monitoring is trying to look for potential problems, like somebody making a very negative statement about the company and that news being shared with others. Um, so to realize this kind of an information early on allows the organization 
to react to this kind of um, message with a response to it and therefore to reduce the problem. As well as there may be opportunities to leverage and to recognize these is important as well. And then one of the big benefits, typical analytics of companies are focused on the data that they have within their own organization based on ERP systems, their customers, their products, their revenues, all internal information. But now social competitive analytics allows to also monitor the performance of your competition. You can go out and gather data about the response of customers in social media channels regarding the performance of your competition. And then you can compare it to your own competition in the social media channels and see how you are doing in that regard. So one very attractive business opportunity there. Now, if you want to analyze the data, you first, first have to gather it. And there's so much of different kinds of information you can get from social media channels. There may be an audio information like a voice recording. There may be a video recording like on YouTube or somewhere else. There may be pictures out there. There may be text out there, documents, social media, emails, commands, and the content from websites. All of this information can be transformed into data that may be used for analytics. And then finally into text, because most of the information that we analyze is based on understanding what it means and that is expressed in words. So we use online dictionaries to make sure that there are no spelling errors and um, also that we understand, for example, the sentiment um, that is associated with a certain word. And all this can be done by machines, automated even. Uh, supervised and unsupervised machine learning is mainly used to analyze this data because it's too much to be analyzed by an individual person or by even a lot of individuals. And then the basic of it, obviously, is statistics and algorithms. But you don't have to care if you have a tool that um, knows how to manage uh, all the algorithms. You just start them and get your reporting out of it. Then the final point is to produce information again that can be utilized, which may be in form of text. That text can be converted into audio or into use for chatbots. If a company has, a, a, for example, a service line, People don't need to be working in that service line uh, on, the, on the telephone, but they rather can utilize a chatbot to solve the majority, at least, of the problems by having learned from information from so social media channels. And then you can also produce regular documents and dashboards and reports or whatever you would like to use from it. There are also criticisms uh, around social media analytics, and I don't want to ignore them, but to basically address them. And reasons why social media analytics is not valued is, for example, the lacking quality of data. And you know, when you go out there um, on social media and look at the commands, some of them are not properly formatted. Some of them are, you know, even in abbreviated words or um, not easy to understand. So there's a lack of quality in the data, spam and similar things. Then also another problem of social media analytics is that what you gather today may be already outdated tomorrow because you permanently have to basically search for information to analyze it and to report upon it. And so one of the efforts that goes along with it, it cannot be done by individuals. It has to be automated. And that is one of the criticisms. You have to know how to automate in order to really benefit from social media analytics. And I will show you some of it. And then you have to um, have tools that allow you to do social media analytics. And some of them may be complex, including statistics and understanding what happens behind the scenes and knowing what you are doing. But again, that's an area where you can grow. And if you are an expert in it, certainly there's a lot of demand for it. Now, what is the business situation? Why even care about social media analytics from a business perspective? This is the amount of data that is created every single minute on the internet. And just to give you one example, it's 69 million messages on, um, on the social media channels like WhatsApp. 
there are millions and tons of data. And so that's one of the problems as well. You have to have powerful computers to evaluate all this data. Now let's look at the reality. Once a year, PricewaterhouseCoopers, one of the big consulting organizations, is doing a CEO survey. And here, this one is the result from the CEO survey from the year 2019. And what these CEOs, more than 1,000 CEOs worldwide, were saying is 94% of CEOs consider understanding customer preferences and needs as critical information. That's the information they would love to have. They really feel it's necessary to do a good job in their business. But at the same time, they are realizing that only 15% of the information that they receive from their internal IT is comprehensive and really answers these kind of questions. And so what they really understand is that they need social media analytics to help alleviate this problem and provide them with more accurate, more timely information about their customers' preferences and needs. And I will show you how. First of all, just look also at which are the social media channels in the world that are most popular. The most popular in regards to the number of um, individual users is Facebook, then YouTube, then WhatsApp, then Instagram, and you know them, probably most of them. Now, one perspective is to look at how many uh, recognized users are in these different channels. The other one is how much traffic do they actually produce. So there's more statistics to it, but I don't want to um, give you too many slides on it. And I also want to share with you that it's different by country. So if you are a social media manager in one country, you may want to know what is the most relevant channel in your area. And for Germany, uh, the most relevant one is YouTube and then followed by WhatsApp and then Facebook. So a different sequence of significance. And therefore, if you do postings or you want to analyze it, it makes sense to focus on that end. Now we are living in a time where things are changing more quickly and more dramatically than in earlier decades. Like if you look at certain innovations, for example, the telephone, how long did it take for the telephone to reach the first 100 million users worldwide? It took 75 years, or oh, that's a long period. Now, how long did it take for the mobile phone to reach 100 million users? 16 years. How about the World of Web? Seven years. Facebook, four years. WhatsApp, two years. Instagram, two years. Candy Crush Saga, one year. So one thing that is visible here, as the years are progressing, the speed in which the internet and the data on the internet is increasing is radically getting stronger. So if you are in the business and you want to know what your customers are saying on social media channels, it's not sufficient to look at outdated information. You have to continually monitor, are there any new solutions, new social media channels that are appearing and how can we leverage them? So it's the permanent action-based business. And also look at for every 100 people in the world, how many are actually already social media users? 25. So that's a huge amount of individuals that are contributing to the amount of information and valuable information, their opinions on the World Wide Web. Now, how do you gather data about these individuals? Your own website is the first clear information channel because people are visiting your website and performing certain actions if you have, for example, an online store. So to analyze this data would be the first source. And no one else other than you have access to this data on your own website. So it's a competitive advantage. Then you can also look on other websites and everybody can do that. Your competition can do it, you can do it. And if your competition is leveraging the information there and you are not, then you have a competitive disadvantage. So watch out if you are not utilizing social media analytics already in your organizations, 
there's the risk that competition already does. And then there's additional data. You can certainly buy data, but you can also combine the data from your own website and from other websites with your internal data on your ERP system, your CRM system, your call center, and so on. That all together makes it even richer. And now I want to turn over to Julia for her part of the presentation. Yeah, so I'm going to cover the part Google Analytics for social media as Google Analytics being a great uh, way to analyze your own website or your own e-commerce site in case you have your own um, e-commerce site. Um, just taking one step back. Yeah, so as I said, just taking one step backward. Um, why is it important for us to analyze our own website data? Um, I found this great um, survey where they interviewed over 2,500 marketers in the US. And here you can see um, one of the graphs that I found super uh, like interesting for us marketers. Um, so CMOs, chief marketing officers, and top marketing leaders got asked the question, what percent of your marketing budget are you currently spending on social media? And then they also got asked what they're planning on spending in the next 12 months and the next five years. And what we can see here is that social media spend will continue to increase. So 23.5% of marketing budget in the next five years. So out of all the marketing budget, Apparently, they think that they will um, continue spending or continue to increase the amount out of that budget that goes into social media. What does that mean for us marketers or social media marketers specifically? It means an increased responsibility and pressure to prove the impact of our social media marketing efforts, right? If companies continue to give us more money to handle social media, we have to prove the worth of it. Um, so yeah, and now getting into a great way of doing that is um, the use of Google Analytics. Pretty sure you've all at least heard about it. So Google Analytics for, um, simply is a free website tracking tool and platform that collects data on how users interact with your website. And um, it's just like a screenshot of how their interface looks like. Um, so Google Analytics is great for a lot of different reasons. You can find out um, how people arrive on your website, how much traffic does your website get, what demographics do you have, what devices are users using. Um, so a lot of information there, but for us specifically talking about social media, um, the question is, which social analytics reports should you or we monitor to analyze the effectiveness of our social media marketing strategies? And I've picked five that I feel most valuable and I'd like to share with you. So the first one is looking into traffic by channel grouping. So Google Analytics does a great job in automatically grouping different um, channels into um, like these buckets. And here you can see um, the different channels and how social so it's called social, that's all of our social media platforms, how social compares to other channels. So here you can see that social, and this is out of um, Pick the Revenue, the Google Analytics that comes from my company. I just, of course, included dummy data. Um, so you can see that social is number four out of all the different channels. So just to see if you're thinking about what you want to invest in your marketing budget or your budgeting for the next year, um, where you should put more effort in, how is social comparing to the other channels. Um, and I just also include a little, like, where you can find the report in case you ever want to click around there. Um, yeah, the next one is traffic by social channels. So you saw the number four said social. If you click on that, you get to this report, um, traffic by social channels. So you can see a breakdown of all the different networks that um, where your company is currently driving people to your website. Um, so you can see the breakdown here, and it's a great way to find out which social network drives most traffic to your website. And in our case, you can see LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter are the top three. It makes sense because we're a B2B business to business um, company. So LinkedIn is definitely our strongest network, but I don't want to only rely on my gut feeling saying I think LinkedIn is best, but now I have data to look um, at and uh, know where I should invest more money, time into, or maybe what social channels I should improve. Um, the third report is goal completions by social channels. So goal completion is simply put, when a visitor completes a specific action you are tracking. So it depends on if you have an e-commerce site, you can set up a goal completion to be when somebody adds a product to your cart, or another goal could be when somebody makes a purchase. If you're not having, or you don't have an e-commerce site, for example, we don't have an e-commerce site, um, for us a goal completion would be when somebody subscribes to our newsletter, to our e-newsletter, or when somebody fills out a form, kind of a hand raise, I wanna to talk to sales, I wanna learn more about what your company does. So we would want to track those kind of behaviors. So that's um, meant by goal completion. 
Um, so here we can also see, uh, sorry, just one more sec. Uh, in the same report, number three, you can look at the social networks, not only how much traffic do we bring in by each, each network, but also we want to look at how does that like traffic convert in the funnel um, into either a purchase or a lead, a prospect, however we want to call it. So you definitely want to look at both the traffic, but then also how it converts to really figure out which social network is most valuable to you. Uh, thanks. So coming to report number four, landing pages. A landing page is the first page people visit when landing on your website. And in this re re report, we can see what pages, what landing pages are most shared on our social channels to really figure out, um, yeah, what pages are people most interested in, what content performs best, um, what kind of content should we continue doing or improve on. So that's a great overview to look, um, okay, depending on what you're sharing on social media, what do people click on and how do they actually land on your website. Um, before we come to the fifth report, the fifth report will be on UCM parameters. I just I wanted to quickly explain what this actually means in case you're not familiar with it. So UTM stands for Urchin Tracking Module, and that's because the Urchin Software Corporation is initially came up with this, um, but now it's usually known as UTM parameters. Um, so UTM parameters are short pieces of code you can add to your URLs through your links, and it's a great way to track results from specific social media campaigns. Um, so you can create experiments, testing different things. You kind of add a tag to it. Um, so I created just one example URL for you to see how it looks like. So the original URL is criticalrevenue.com, the company's website, and then the UTM link below is already added those short pieces of code to it. So you can say the one, uh, see the ones in bold. It's UTM source, LinkedIn. I said it's example LinkedIn. UTM medium is organic social. So I'm defining that this will be promoted on social media. UTM campaign is the second campaign name that we're currently running. And then UTM current term is corporate. Um, if you're wondering how you can build it, I just linked a little um, free UTM builder below. It's super easy to just insert the names of it. Um, so what you can do now is you can create the same link, but instead of UTM term corporate, you could say UTM term Julia, for example. So if I run a social media strategy, not only from the corporate LinkedIn account for my company, but also using pro uh, private pages. So for example, mine or my CEO's um, personal LinkedIn page, and you want to know which one brings more most people to your website or which one um, brings in more leads, um, you can use these UTM terms to specify and really figure out, um, yeah, A-B test these kind of different um, things. So now that we know what UTM means, this is just like my final report, is UTM campaign report. Um, so yeah, you find it if you click on acquisitions and then campaigns, and here you can see you find the campaign name that I just set, um, how does this perform compared to other campaigns that we're running? So if I want to look into what campaigns work best in 2021 to define what campaigns I should do in 2022, I can look into this campaign report, um, yeah, and find out what works and what doesn't. So that's, that's it for own website. Thank you very much, Julia, for uh, sharing this part, because I will continue on to leverage this information that you already have um, now with additional tools. And I want to cover this topic now with how to do and perform analytics for social media utilizing a programming language called R, which is an open source solution. It's actually one of the most, uh, um, you, know, you know, liked uh, programming languages. Below you find all the different programming languages um, that exist, and uh, it's in the very top uh, corner, so that is uh, obviously nice, but it's also you could use other tools like SPSS, SAS, SAP, many other ones, which are commercial ones, or other open source applications which are free, um, and R is one of these. So now, um, Julia already shared with you how you can evaluate your own website and this one would be an easy analysis that you could do on social media channels and looking at how many visitors do you receive related to these different channels. Whether you have advertisements on there or not, um, it can be used via the links that Julia was showing, but it could also be that you monitor how many likes you get 
on YouTube channel on certain videos that you didn't produce where you don't have a link. So in addition to what you capture on your own website, you capture the data from your social media channels here and you get a statistics on, on how important which social media channel is for your own organization because it may be very different from organization to organization, from country to country and this is real data for you. Now let's assume you do a, a campaign on TV. Uh, you will certainly be able to recognize the TV spot happens at a certain time and then either you have like a QR code or website or like uh, any other information that links it directly to your website. People, maybe there's an advertising break, so why should they not use the time and if they are intrigued and interested and click on their phone and say, oh, I visit that website. And now on your own website, you can see there's additional traffic there and you can relate it to that TV spot, whether they clicked it just because it's one minute after the advertisement or whether it is because they use the code that you put into the advertisement. Um, so that's very helpful for social media channel um, analytics because you understand which campaign in TV, for example, was most successful. Now first you collect data, then you try to understand your users and I will get into this uh, in the next slides, how you understand the sentiment and the opinions of the different users and then you want to convert it into marketing decisions, uh, what channels you want to play on, what campaigns you want to run and, and where you want to actually convert them into customers. So from your own website, you can look at bounce rate and exit rate as Julia already showed, but you can also look at it from different uh, benchmarks in regards to where do the individuals that visit your website originate from. Um, if they originate from campaigns that you had, uh, direct from email or from any other one. So you see the different bounce and exit rates and you certainly want to avoid them to leave your website. So you want to finally end up converting them to customers. So in the beginning, maybe you have 1000 visitors entering your website from those 340 visit some product pages. Others just maybe skip out already. And then 140 add a product to their cart on your online store. And then they are still not completed. They may still go and return and leave without purchasing anything. And then in the end here, you have um, 22 of the 1000 that actually buy a product. And that kind of a conversion rate, you want to monitor that. Where do you lose your potential visitors? How can you keep them long on your website? How can you make them actually buy a product? Maybe you know more about them and you can adjust the pricing for the product or provide a discount to them last minute when they are on the website to make them this a discount is only valid for the next 60 seconds, makes them uh, to make a quick decision. But you have to understand your customer before you can make an adequate offer. Now you can also monitor your online shoppers behavior. On your channel, you may differentiate different types of visitors new visitors or those that are returning that have bought from you before. Are they buying the same products? Are they buying different products? How long do they stay online? All this can be analyzed. And this analytic has been done with, uh, with R. It's a correlation analysis. I don't want to go too deep in statistics now. On the left side, you see a correlation of different characteristics of a visitor and you see a negative or positive correlation Blue means a positive, red means a negative correlation and thereby you learn what are actually the aspects that lead individuals to continue on staying on your website and what leads them to leave the website. And then on the right side you see a decision tree. As these kind of decision trees are often used by computers. For example, if you apply for a credit card, the bank will typically enter data and then a computer will return with the information, should this person receive a credit card based on the demographics, like the income, the age, and all the different aspects that may be relevant. And this is what is a resulting decision tree for individuals visiting your website and how to convert them to customers. Now I want to change the topic a little bit to text analytics because much of what customers leave on social media channels is related to their emotion uh, or to their opinion and it is typically formulated in form of text, voice or video. And social media text analytics includes four different elements. 
The first element is concept mining. That is just to understand on which channel, which topics are typically addressed. What are the terms that are used there? Intention mining is, is some of, are some of these individuals having an intention to buy a product in case you recognize on a social media channel that somebody is interested to purchase something from you or from a comp competitor, then it may be smart to uh, intervene if it's on your channel to offer um, a product. Intention mining is important to understand also how many customers you may have, may have tomorrow or may have in future. Some individuals may say, next year I plan to purchase this and that. Trend mining is analyzing new trends like shopping behaviors or different colors for, for your products. Uh, maybe you have shirts and you want to pick the color that is currently just a, a trend. And uh, to find out, you know, the fastest way to find out is via social media analytics. And sentiment analysis shows emotions that individuals have. Do they have a positive image of your company? Do they have a negative image of your company? Are they satisfied with your customer support? Are they dissatisfied with your customer support? And all this you find out via sentiment analysis. Now also one topic that may be of importance to many organizations is fake news. If there is something that is not uh, correct information, but it's you know mentioned on social media channels, it may still reach hundreds or thousands of individuals before it is corrected. So it may leave an impression and an image with your organization about your organization. And so you want to find out quickly in order to take corrective action. For example, to make a statement on that social media channel that this information is not completely correct and this would be the right way um, basically to take out the, the risk. Just to give you an example, there was a fake news in 2013 um, hackers actually got control over the Associated Press um, Twitter account and they reported that there was an explosion at the White House and President Obama was injured. That fake news created 4,000 retweets from this one single tweet and Reuters um, showed that on the stock market on that day 136 billion US dollars of value was destroyed just because of this tweet. And fortunately, later the day, the information was corrected and so the stock market actually recovered. But if you would be trading on that day, you would want to know ahead and then benefit from this change. But I, what I really want to say is watch out if negative news are, um, you know, basically posted on social media about your organization, you want to know it quickly and you want to correct it quickly. And um, MIT is a university in the United States. They researched more than 100,000 stories with more than 300, 3 million Twitter accounts um, in total. And they found out that fake news actually reached between 1,000 and 100,000 Twitter users. Um, and fake news reached the first 1,500 individuals six times faster than correct tweets. So yeah. Uh, social media analytics can help you uncover any fake news about your organization or your products. Now I want to differentiate two different types of information that are out there on social media channels. There's static text, like on websites you find PDF documents or annual company reports or any other static information that is not so frequently changing. So once you analyze it, you can keep it. But more interesting even than that is dynamic text because it reflects a very current opinion. Like for example, if you go to TripAdvisor and you want to book um, a vacation, you see commands. If it's about your own hotel, if you are a hotel operator, you want to know what kind of feedback your customers are giving there because they will compare um, with other hotels and if it's not so positive, then maybe they don't book at your hotel. So you want to look at tweets, at commands, at discussion, at chat. And TripAdvisor is one example of one of those social media channels. Now in preparation for today, I just took a few, quick view on TripAdvisor and looked for one 
property in Cancun. And you see, it's not the least expensive one, $476 or euros in that case, um, even more in dollars. So the point is, if you look at it, it has ratings. In this case, an excellent rating of 4.5, and it's rated also on location, cleanliness, service, and value. And this data you should capture. Uh, you call it web scraping. You go to websites and you basically extract data that is valuable to you in order to analyze it. And you also can do the text analytics. And in this case, there's more than 6,000 reviews on this specific property. Now, for a person working in, uh, in marketing or in sales, it's too much work to look at 6,000 reviews on one single property. I mean, there are thousands of properties and thousands of reviews, millions of data records. So it has to be automated. So it can be automated. That's the good news. And now you can look at the text. You can extract it from the website. You can even focus and say, I only want to look for my own hotel and the excellent um, uh, feedback. And that's a terrible feedback because from these, I can learn the most. From the good ones, I want to repeat. From the negative ones, the critical ones, I want to find out what went wrong and how can I maybe change it for future visitors of my property. And again, you would use text analytics to find out what they wrote and what the topics were. Now with text, you have one of the um, issues that text is not only containing words, but they may also contain emoticons and emojis. So you have to train your computer to understand these and convert them into regular text to interpret them properly. Now, this is an easy text analytics, not of much value, but you may be familiar with, uh, with these kinds of diagrams. They just indicate the significance. The larger the word is printed, the more individuals were using that word in their text. But the next level is really to look at what kind of emotions do they contain. In that case, and I analyzed 1,000 comments um, from Airbnb, which is another social media channel, obviously, here. And the positive words contained in these were clean. So I certainly would recommend for any property owner to keep their uh, property clean. And perfect, helpful, beautiful, convenient. You see breakfast was an option. So maybe you should also offer uh, breakfast or indicate where the individuals can get a nice breakfast. That may be some learning from it. That this one is not regarding one single property, but multiple ones. And on the negative side, you see the worst thing that can happen to visitor is if they don't get the keys just in time as they approach the property. So you should never be late. Noise is another topic. And so one of the benefits, if you are not, if you have many of these properties that you call your own, then maybe you cannot monitor the noise the neighbors make at certain times. You only visit the property once in a while. But your customers, they are living there basically for the time being, and they do all the recordings. And if they are dissatisfied, they will mention it in their text. And you may be finding out that always uh, between 10 p.m. and 12 p.m., the neighbor in that one property is hearing loud music. And maybe you should have a conversation. But how would you know if you're not there? So social media analytics and specifically text analytics can help you find information that you would not have guessed you can find. Now, another ex example of text mining is we are converting a video, for example, from YouTube. In this case, you get a transcript on YouTube. You have the option to convert it into text and then to you do your text analytics. It will do first an entity type um, discovery and then a location discovery. But the most important, it will again do a sentiment analysis. And here you see um, a summary basically of that specific video on YouTube, how many individuals felt positive, neutral, or negative, and what were the specific emotions that were triggered just by this specific YouTube video. And most organizations do have YouTube videos related to their organization. So you would like to know. Now I want to switch again to Mexico. And Walmart was recently in the press about being extremely successful now that you have a little bit of an inflation in Mexico. Um, so prices are rising. 
And the same happens to Walmart with them purchasing the products. Their prices are rising when they buy things, but they sell it for a lower price than before. And that is their smart strategy. And they are attracting more customers in Mexico right now and growing more than their competition. So sometimes to change pricing can be significantly important to your business. And so I will later on show you how you can use social media analytics to understand what prices your competition has, what your prices are in comparison to it, whether you have a benefit or um, a disadvantage on that end. And now also, um, as you see here, there's a statement, e-commerce sales in Mexico grew 27% in the quarter, reaching 4.5 of total sales. And Walmart said it would see, soon allow shoppers to pay for online orders using Cashy. So there are innovations happening. And basically, again, this would go back to Julia's presentation, where you can utilize internal, your own company analytics, for example, on your e-commerce channel. So again, another reason to be an expert on it. Now, looking at the YouTube channel from Walmart in Mexico, they have their own postings, and it would be important for them to analyze what is the reaction to our own postings. And you see here, one uh, video has 22 million visitors, the other one 16 million, and the other one only 3.7 million. Only, I'm saying, because in comparison to 22, it's not a lot. So the question is, um, social media analytics can help you to monitor your own channel and to see what kind of topics, what kind of words, what kind of pictures, what kind of protagonists and so on help us to reach a larger audience. And uh, so that's part of social media analytics as well, to extract the number of visitors. But you shouldn't be sticking with that only, but you should also look at how many positive or negative feedbacks that you get, likes or dislikes. In this case, this is not from um, Walmart itself, but from somebody else. And they got 570 positive um, or likes and 37 dislikes. So wouldn't you like to find out if you would be Walmart, what are the dislikes? Why did they dislike us? Or on the likes, why did they like us? Again, there you would use your sentiment analysis from similar to the picture that I showed you before, and you can do it, for example, with R. The same here. On this one, you see, again, 6,000 visitors, 353 likes, and so on, and the text, and the text analytics can be applied on all of them, and compare. And now I want to share with you, because in the end, you won't only use one tool, but you do actually need to do web crawling. Web crawling, I shared with you earlier, is the process of extracting data from websites, simulating to be an end user, but not being an end user, but being a computer. And Python is one of the most favored solutions for it. It's again, an open source application, and it is one of the top rated programming languages. So in my opinion, the combination of Python and R is perfect to really support your social media analytics. Now an example of price development. I explained with Walmart how important pricing can be. And here we have the internet. Uh, if you go to um, a website like Amazon, you can look for a chair and you can look at what chairs cost with other companies and with your comp competition. And you can basically compare your prices against the price of your competition in that moment. If you do this on a daily basis because you automated it via your computer, you can look back 10 years and compare how the prices develop with the competition for this product and how did our prices develop. And so that's very strong to have as an information. This is actually real data on IKEA and this specific chair. And it actually um, is now l much less expensive than it was in the year 1988 when it was introduced. But all that data is available for free on the internet for your own products. You know it, but you can analyze your competition. And now again, also looking at your competition, like this is again a, um, a picture created by R and it analyzed ratings by location from Airbnb. And all of the ratings are displayed in different colors in this case. And the good ratings are yellow and the bad ratings are dark. Now, if you would want to invest in a new property in Washington, D.C., 
then you would certainly not want to invest in an area where all of the ratings or most of the ratings are dark and negative, but you would rather invest in an area where the ratings are positive because that is possibly leading to a good utilization of your Airbnb property and to the same ranking as the others because maybe they have better shopping there, better transportation or less um, you know, uh, violence. All these aspects you can't see um, on your own, but if you see the ranking and you see this aggregation of data, you can make smart business decisions. And now the summary of what social media analytics actually contributes to. It contributes to a better product development because once you know what the opinions of your customers are and of your competitors customers as well, you know what they like, what they don't like, what are the pain points and you can improve your products and your services. Customer experience. What is the feedback of your customers in regards to your, um, you know, for example, uh, your telephone hotline, if they have a problem, what is their satisfaction with your products? And how can you increase their loyalty and thereby their lifetime value economically? And then branding, obviously the image of your organization, understanding the emotions that are related to your brand, um, that is important because you find out what is the reasoning behind it in the text and then you can take corrective action. And obviously the competitive analysis. Wow, this is, this is, I believe, one of the main topics because, you know, your own data, some of it you could already analyze, but hey, to analyze your competition, that's strong. And operational e efficiency as well. Like, for example, how effective are your marketing campaigns? Julia was showing you that you can link it to the visitors on your website. So there's a very strong indication of value for social media analytics on that end. 